This is the way that I described it on my, for lack of a better term, more personal Facebook account. I said, take or leave it, and while I may have gone over the top a little, I'm telling you that that's how I'm feeling on the inside right now. Shaking, shivering, shouting, please, please, listen to history. Listen to those who are currently in this hall. Listen to those of us who would like to make Alia and can't. So, I'm not the only one who's kvetching about Netanyahu. I'm not the only one saying that Netanyahu and Boehner shouldn't have violated Article 2, Section 3 of the United States Constitution. I'm not the only one who's saying that just because Obama violated the Constitution doesn't mean that anyone else can and should violate the U.S. Constitution. I'm not the only one saying that Netanyahu is only serving to hurt Israel. In fact, people are leaving Islam because of the way that Netanyahu is damaging Islam. And I'm not just saying that. Let me read you what this one young man, who I'm assuming he's a Sabra because he doesn't say otherwise, let me read you what one Sabra said in his article about if he were a French Jew, where would he be? And I'm going to read you part of what he said. I cite some of it in my blog, but what he said should really make people think, wow, wow, this is what it's called like under Netanyahu. And this is what, some of what he says. If I were a French Jew, the last place to which I would immigrate is the state of Israel. From any perspective that you look at a step, it does not seem to be logical to migrate from Western Europe to the land of milk and honey, where neither milk nor honey come at a bargain. We'll get to the prices later. Hint, both milk and honey are cheaper in France. But let's start with the prime factor that supposedly motivates French Jews to leave their homeland. Fear of Arab terror. Islam witnessed last year more than 1,000 terror attacks in one full-scale war that caused hundreds of thousands to evacuate their homes because of rocket attacks and sent further millions of residents to seek shelter from some 7,000 missiles that targeted any part of the country. And, of course, he continues to cite the statistics. He talks about, this is what's happening in Israel. When he talks about the French um, French living wages versus Israeli living wages. Let's see. What you earn is one thing, and what you can buy with your earnings is another. However, the local purchasing power in Paris is by is by 22% higher than in Tel Aviv. If instead of pubs, we compare the French Jews' favorite Ashdod with the Mediterranean Pearl of Marseille, the gap in purchasing power is even larger, 37%. So security-wise and financially-wise, it does not pay off to move from France to Israel. And, of course, why do you think that the economy in Israel no pun intended, sucks right now. A part of it is because the Haledim are sucking the welfare system dry. And guess who runs Israel right now? Because of Ben Gurion's mistake. A good at Israel. In fact, when I read about Ben Gurion's mistake, now we all know why it's called Ben Gurion's mistake. Because the first time I'd seen that term used, I kind of realized. Oh, it was Ben Gurion who, so right from the beginning, Agodat Yisrael basically were somehow able to convince David Ben Gurion, though he let himself be convinced that, hey, give Israel to Agodat Yisrael and it's definitely going to be a Jewish state. Agodat Yisrael, however, is an anti Zionist organization and they don't believe in having a state of Israel until whoever they believe that Moshiach is, comes. And let me, let me read you the last part, the one that I cited in my blog. What does this uh, have to offer? It is easier to find kosher meat here, and there is more variety of synagogues. To young people, it uh, also offers the dubious pleasure of devoting two or three years of your life to the army. And let me say that too. He says, what does this all have to offer? It is easier to find kosher meat here and there is more variety of synagogues. Well, I wish he would... <sighs> There's not necessarily a variety of synagogues either because if you're Reform, Masorti, Reconstructionist, 
even if you're Orthodox and you don't toe the line of the Chaledim, you're not going to be considered legitimate enough. And not only that, but it talks about it is easier to find kosher meat here. Not, not necessarily, because you have to have a certification from the Israeli Rabbani. If you don't toe their line, they can take your kosher certification away. He also says, to young people, it also offers the dubious pleasure of devoting two or three years of your life to the army. And it's not easy. And there are even people who are in a lot of trouble right now because the Chaledim are trying to get themselves excused from drafts with few exceptions. And then basically, if you don't tow the Chaledim line, you're also harassed. Sounds tempting? Perhaps to Netanyahu and Bennett but not in the eyes of hundreds of thousands of Israelis who desperately search your family vaults for a proof that would grant them EU passport and not long ago took part in the popular Olim Le Berlin protest that expressed the wish to immigrate to Europe. Perhaps this law is a case wherein what looks nice from a distance is actually less attractive when you take a close-up shot. Of course, the anti-Semites are going to say, Ha! That's proof that Jews are European. Or what it's actually proof of is that it's proof that a lot of people are saying, well, if this is what it was going to be like anyway, and let's just take a chance on the fact that this law is not supposed to be established until Moshiach comes or whatever. If, it, if, if it's going to be like this anyway, if it's going to be run by a good I I either want to stay out of this law until... A Mashiach comes, whoever he or she is, or I at least want to stay out of an Israel that a good Akhisa rules. And even though Benjamin Netanyahu might still become prime minister, the more liberal parties are actually ahead in the polls right now. And I go ahead and cite this in my blog. And it said here that um, Channel 10. Arutse Ser surmises that Netanyahu could form a 60-member governing coalition by joining forces with Jewish Home, Shas, United Toward Judaism, Kulon, Yishai, and Yisa Betenu. I mean, how how good does that sound? So if you want Netanyahu to be prime minister again, you have to give more power to the Chaledim, including Shas, which, by the way, was of the party. And keep that in mind. So for people supporting Netanyahu, not only do you guys need a refresher on the United States Constitution, you especially need a refresher or a course in Israeli history and Israeli current events. And if you're Jewish, and especially if you've known you're Jewish for a long time, if you were in a position to know your identity long before I did, and I don't care whether you're messianic or not, even non-messianics, again, reform, Masorti, reconstructionist, if you were in a position to at least know your ethnic identity long before I did, you especially ought to not be supporting Netanyahu. You ought to be looking at this and going, wow, wow, this is, this is how things currently became in this all. So... I mean, I, I pretty much, I pretty much have said all that I could say on this subject. I mean, what else can I say? And so, there's that.